Welcome to the Eye on Annapolis Local Business Spotlight. There are thousands of locally owned businesses in the area, some small and some large. Some you may know and others you don't. But one thing they all have in common is a great story and we want to share it with you. Join us every Saturday as we talk to the founders, the owners, and the managers of local businesses you have come to know and love, and those you will come to know and love. Now here's your host, John Frenet, with this week's Local Business Spotlight. This is pretty cool because now I am talking to, I thought I had the oldest building business in town that I talked to earlier this week with Colonial Players who are celebrating their 75th year, but now we're sitting across the table from Michael Flanagan, who's the owner of Weems & Plath. Who are celebrating 95 years this year, right? Well, first of all, congratulations and thank you for inviting me into your office here. Thank you. And thank you for coming in. I, I I don't know if I can accept the congratulations, though. There, there's lots of folks before me who uh, who started this 95-year swing. Well, but... I say, you don't look a day over 45 <laughs> or so. I don't know. <laughs> right. <laughs> Whatever it may be. But right. What's your background? How did you get here? Sure. Um so how did I get here? Well, I grew up sailing. Took ninety five South and <laughs> yeah, that that's it. Well, three hundred one, three hundred one to through across the bridge is way easier. Uh, so I guess conceptually, why? Uh, so I grew up sailing. Uh, grew up in New Jersey. Uh, I had a friend whose family had uh, a CNC Redline forty one, this beautiful old boat, uh, which we kept in the in the Western Sound, which is basically if you live up that that way, that's the closest place to go sailing. Mm -hmm. And there's there's good racing. There's a lot of good uh, uh, yacht clubs up there. So that's the place to be. But always love sailing and, you know, have a, a pretty good understanding of the bits and pieces and parts, right? Meaning what's the equipment? How does the whole, how does it all tie together? So fast forward from that point, about 20 years, and I started buying small businesses. And lo and behold, what is for sale? But Weems and Plath didn't that wasn't listed in the in the ad, but I said, all right, well, I I I buy small businesses, I like owning and operating small businesses, I have a, a decent understanding of the boat world, if you will. Sure. So that was the perfect fit. Um, I called up, uh, I think it was actually a broker who had it listed. Very quickly got in touch with Peter Trogdon, who owned it at the time. Uh, he and I all got along great, and and we came to a deal. It's always great when somebody uh, gets along well with in a transaction like that. You have to, right? It, and I, I recently completed another one. But if if the buyer and the seller don't mesh, it doesn't work, right? Because you, you have a seller who's owned it for, you know, in Peter's case, I think he owned it for 20 some odd years, maybe right. longer. Uh, the most recent one I purchased, the, the man started it 47 years ago. So this is this is part of them. It's part of their. Persona. There's a lot of emotions involved in the in the transaction like that, for sure. That's right, and they want to be sure that whoever they they pass the reins to isn't going to mess it up. Yeah. <laughs> to, to, to put it uh, to put it to uh, simply, but you know, it, it's funny you're talking about it was such an historic type of a business. Okay, now Weems and Plath has been 95 years. Yes, you're now charged with steering this. That's right. Um, pretty daunting. Yeah, you know, I there's a uh, a TV commercial out there now, I think for an insurance company or something, but they show this this person who is now the owner of this grain and feed store, right? Who knows, out in the Midwest someplace. But what does he say? He doesn't say, Hi, I'm the owner, hi, I'm the boss. He says, I'm the caretaker of this business. We've been in business for a hundred years. And when you look at a business this old, it really is the right way to characterize it because the business was around way before I showed up, and God willing, it'll it'll be around way after. So I'm I'm sort of in this little intervening period. There's a lot of history before me. Hopefully, there'll be a lot of history after me. Take us back into that history. I know it was founded back in 1928, right? Um, which is older than either of us. Uh, which, <laughs> you know, in my case, that's hard, you know hard to find. But I mean, it started out as a navigation school way back when, right? That, that's right. So it was uh, started by Captain Weems. His his oil painting is on the wall right there. He was a Naval Academy graduate um, and resident of Annapolis. Uh, so the story goes that once he came out of the academy, he watched the current technology of navigating the Atlantic. And he said, boy, there's got to be a better way to do this. Uh, so he ultimately founded the Weems School of Navigation. So 
everything you see here really started as this correspondence class on how to do navigation. And his whole take on it was, hey, we need to make it easier. We need to make a system that cop pilots can readily do in a cockpit, right? Because aviation was a new thing back then, which sprouted into, okay, now he's got this poor correspondence class. I want to give my students tools to make it easier to navigate, right? The stuff that existed, you know, the protractors, the dividers, the parallel rules. He came up with actually one of his first creations was uh, an alternative to a parallel rule, which to this day we still sell. And we still sell, and they're very popular. So one after another, he came up with this, hey, here's a better chart tool. The school was on uh, the circle, right, by the state house. Uh, and actually, it started in his house when he was on that, that circle. Eventually, uh, he got in touch with Carl Plath of Germany. And Carl Plath, who owns C. Plath Compasses, say, hey, I really like what you're doing. Here's a great fit. You, you know, Captain Weems, you're selling to the customers, same customers who would want to buy my compasses. Weems became a distributor for C. Plath. Next thing you know, the two of them form, form this entity, Weems and Plath. That's that's where it came from. Well, I mean, the instruments that you have made, that you currently do make, they're a lot more, I mean, obviously, they're very well-respected precision instruments for navigation. Right. They're also pieces of art. Yeah. Uh, I, I will say that. And I do remember that my father had on his desk uh, a Weems and Plath clock in a box. Right. And I, there's probably a fancier name for that, but I'll call it a clock well, in a box. Clock in a box works. Um, and I do remember that we also had a Weems and Plath uh, weather station in sure. the house. Um, and at one point I went through a uh, through a phase where I always had to know what the barometric pressure was in the morning before I went to school. I don't know <laughs> what, what happened there. But I mean, that was something that was you know just very, very special to our house growing up. Yes. And that sort of gives you the idea of, of the how long the company has been around and the quality of the, you know, the equipment and the, I don't want to say gear, but the instruments right. that you guys are making. Today, I mean, obviously back in 1928, navigation was entirely different. I mean, Loran wasn't invented. Right. <laughs> was, no, no chart plotters. Um, right. I, I mean, it, it's... I, I go back to a story. First time I ever went out to uh, MSNBC and to Redmond, Washington, I booked a Hertz car with a navigation when, before Navi was, you know, a real thing. It was like a, a fancy addition. Right. And I get out there and I'm like going, what kind of an idiot am I not to come out here with a map relying on Hertz to make sure it's in there and it works? Right. <laughs> you know, and, and I, I kick myself in the butt thinking that. But, you know, navigating a boat or, you know, a plane, as you as you had mentioned, you know, in the middle of the ocean, I was watching a video on your website, which is weems-plath.com. And it was just, you know, this boat with nothing but water, a sailboat with nothing but water around and that little drone flying up above over right. but it. But it really put it home and said, I mean, you need quality stuff to make sure that, you know, point B does come on the horizon for you. That's right. You know, and we, so we look at our products. We're, we're not the biggest business out there. Um, I, I have no no aspirations of becoming the next Garmin, you know, next giant company. What I want to do with the business is continue what the tradition has been, which is just make the best stuff out there. If I look at manufacturing in the US, I it's been my experience that if one makes high quality products, one can do well making them in the States. So we don't try to focus on mass produced stuff. What we want to sell is stuff that is, as you mentioned, heirloom quality. And we still sell those instruments, right? Um, it, it's our anniversary edition uh, chronometer, anniversary edition barometer, um, which I don't have hanging in my office right now, but I'll, I'll take it around and show you one. You know, it does make us feel good. And by the way, those, those products come with a lifetime warranty. So it's all part of the mindset. It's just make the best stuff we can possibly make, right? And... Stand by it. Stand by it. And we get people who who send their, their clock in that their grandfather bought, you know, 95 years ago or maybe maybe 94 years ago. Right, right. <laughs> so uh, that's what we, we look to do. We don't want to do it in huge volumes. 
we want to just make the best stuff that can be made. And that carries through to our nav lights, right? So if you look at the, the product uh, progression, sort of, you know, chart tools, we still do a lot of chart tools, right? And um, the good news is that, you know, those in the services still learn how to navigate the traditional way because you need to learn how to navigate without a calculator, if you will. Sure. And recently what we've done is we've, we've moved into the nav light business and we have our OGM line. Uh, just the backstory of that is I, I think we uh, we started doing the OGM four years ago, about a year after I bought this business. And they are the original U.S. Coast Guard, the very first U.S. Coast Guard certified LED nav light, which is pretty cool, right? Now you look at everything is LED now. Sure. These were the first Coast Guard certified. Beautiful design. These things are uh, just built out of solid aluminum housing, 6061 aluminum. And those carry a lifetime warranty. Show me another piece of electronics. Show me another light that carries anything longer than a than a 30-day warranty, right? These carry a lifetime warranty. And I can do it because they are so well built. You know, and, and the fact is LEDs are good for generally 50,000 hours if you if you um, have them properly right. built, designed. Uh, so that's where we want to be. Um, we have some cool new products coming out. We're actually just about to roll out um, something we've seen a lot of customers ask about is a way just to sort of maximize real estate on top of the mast, right? So my nav light's up there. You have some antennas up there. You have an anemometer up there. Uh, so very soon, we're, we're about to roll out a device, which is going to be both your your nav light for, in terms of a sailboat. It'd be a tricolor light sure. uh, with a built-in anemometer, ultrasonic anemometer. That's the kind of stuff that we want to do. That's pretty neat. Yeah. How much of your stuff do you build here in Annapolis? Uh, 100% of the nav lights are built here. Uh, wow. Yeah, they're built right in the back. So we're on 214 Eastern Ave. They're built right in the, the back of the shop. Uh, we have a great crew of folks back there. Uh, Alita and Kelly spend basically all day, every day, uh, building out the lights. We do with uh, clocks and barometers and those types of products. Those are all built here. I mean, obviously, we we I don't have a brass foundry, right? Sure. So we'll bring in the the cases, uh, we'll bring in the movements depending on where they come. Many of them are German movements that come in or Swiss movements. Uh, but, but those the final product is assembled it, it and, can, and yeah, those, done here. Those get built here. Wow, is this the only location that you guys have? This is it. This is it. Yeah, it's funny, I, and I've heard. You know, the boat show is a very big time for us. And we have a lot of customers come through because we have a tent sale every year where we right. sell scratch and dent things. And, and you can get really good deals at our tent sale, which happens to be the same dates as the boat show. So people are in for the boat show. Come park here. We have a shuttle that takes people to the boat show. But anyway, we oftentimes get the comment, wow, this is where where are the, you know, I, I feared you'd have a million square foot factory making this stuff. How do you guys do this? It's efficient. <laughs> well, it's efficient, but you're also not mass producing anything. I mean, you know, if I if I buy, go out and buy a Sea Ray, I don't expect to see Weems and Plath gear on it. No, you won't. Uh, I expect to probably be, and I don't mean to be dissing Sea Ray or anything like that, but I expect to be replacing some of the, you know, some of the tech or the gear yeah. that's on it within a relatively short period of time. And unfortunately, we do live in a. And I hate it that we live in a world where everything is disposable. Yes, it seems. me too. Uh, you know, okay, well, the phone's starting to break. Okay, well, throw it out. We'll get a new one. Right. And as opposed to, hey, can somebody fix it? That's right. Uh, which is refreshing when I hear that you offer a lifetime warranty. And I mean, obviously, you look at your product and it's quality. Uh, it's hand built. You know, I, I'm assuming I'll throw words in your mouth maybe, but I mean, you're probably not apologetic that it's, it costs a premium. And, and that's exactly right. And it is not the cheapest out there, and I have no aspirations to be the cheapest out there because what does that mean? That means it's going to be a mass-produced product from overseas. I want – and personally, I've had the same experience in my personal life. I hate the fact that I buy a, a, a telephone that ends up you know, being thrown away after two years, three years, whatever, because it it breaks. We make this stuff here in the States. It is comes with a lifetime guarantee, and we charge a fair price for it. And, and what I've discovered in, in not only this business, but in other businesses I've owned, when one offers a quality product at a reasonable price, people will buy it. Yeah, you, know, you don't want to be the cheapest out there. That's for sure. Yeah. I mean, and to that end, we, you're not going to see us in 
a lot of OEM. I, I'm not going to say you're not going to see us in any. But right. So you won't see us on the Sea Ray. I love Sea Ray. Uh, but it's not going to be manufacturer's equipment when you buy the boat. I'll tell you, though, there are, and I can't say the names, there are boats whose names you'd be familiar with where we go on as original equipment. And it's it's always at at the higher end, right? Because they're, they're not cheap. But if if someone's buying a higher end boat, you know they want they want they sense. want the higher. I mean, you want you want the confidence and the you know that you know that the the gear that you're going to get is going to take you wherever you're going to go and it's going to see you through to the end of it. That's right. You know, who is your customer on this? I mean, again, I know I can come in, I can go online, and I I saw that you've got a lot of the product that you have online. But I imagine that you are, as you said, you're selling to boat manufacturers. I mean, I imagine if uh, if Trumpy were still producing there, that you would right. see a, a lot of your gear on there. I imagine custom built yachts. Sure. Um, I know there was one that just pulled in here. I can't remember the name of it. That's uh, was built by Christensen. It's one of the few mega mega considered mega yachts. That, yeah, yeah. Um, it's built the, in America. So you'll see. And again, I, I just can't say the names, but there are certain higher end produced in small batch boats that you'll find us on at, as OEM product. We sell a lot to riggers, right? So who's who's among our biggest customer group? It's the riggers because they have a customer that comes in and says, you know, listen, I, I'm refitting my mast. I want to have new lights, new everything. And they'll ask the rigger, what do you suggest? They're going to suggest us, right? Because they know that it's we, we design it so it's easy on them to install it, but they also know that there's not going to be any headaches with it, right? No. Um, so that is a, a big customer base. So think about the installers. So some higher and boat builders, the installers. But we do do a robust business direct to consumer. Um, and you can find us in I don't want to. I don't want to say anyone's name, but you think of any major marine retailer, uh, you'll find us in their shop and on their websites. Uh, you also find us uh, on Amazon. So, oh, and, and when I say direct to consumer, for us, it's not necessarily direct. We go through a, a middle step to the retailer. Okay, but places where a, a consumer would shop. Tell me about Conant Collection. Sure. Did, did I did I mispronounce that? No, you said it perfectly well. Uh, it is. Kona Collections is a, a brand, a business line that that my predecessor in this role, Peter Trogdon, bought back in 2008. At the time, I think you know Peter was looking to grow the overall business a little bit, looking for something that will offset slower periods just in the business cycle in at Weems. Uh, so that business is interesting. They sell or we sell high quality outdoor comb weather instruments. And and I say weather instruments, it's thermometers, but it's also a very interesting design wind gauge, oh. which it is basically works on tr- centrifugal force. It looks like a regulator on a stole, old steam engine as a wind blows okay, hard. It's just the sh- arms sh- spin out and show you the, the, oh, cool. the wind speed, uh, a rain gauge. And I guess at the time, I think the analysis was, and I still think the analysis holds true, it's a higher end brand, right? These are all pure copper. These these are not your accurate thermometer you'd put on your kitchen window. They're expensive, but they're quality. So that business has been run out of Annapolis since 2008, uh, and we continue with it. Interestingly, I just bought the rest of Conan not two months ago. So- <laughs> The balance of the business remained up in Burlington, Vermont, uh, and I, I just completed. I, I guess I felt like I needed to close that circle that Peter had had begun it. So I okay, <laughs> I bought the rest of it. So what did the rest of it entail? Is yeah, so it's uh, it's a really cool business, um, and broadly speaking, really high end metalwork um, is a way to put it. The product that comes out of there is mostly interior lighting products, but they have some super creative people up there, great designers, some, a great machinist up there, great production people who can build anything you want out of metal, uh, which, you know, it, it's, it's really a separate business from Weems, uh, but you can see the similarities, right? There's There's the same attention to detail. It's the same high-end product without trying to do anything at the at the well end. Just just do stuff really, really well and and give to those who want it. Stay in your lane. 
That's exactly right. That's it. <laughs> exactly. You seem to be all over the place. I mean, you've got you know you've you've got your eye open for all these different opportunities sure. and the the way that they can work together with Weems and Plath and Conan Collections and everything else. Do you ever see growth beyond Annapolis? I mean, are we look ever looking at you know opening up a, you know a warehouse in Minot, North Dakota, or something you know something crazy like that? Yeah, I, I um, Weems and Plath has been in Annapolis since day one. Um, out of Captain Weems' house right. initially, as we discussed. Uh, Weems and Plath will be in Annapolis until the end of time. You know, and, and why is that? Because this is the this is the sailing center of the world, right? This is it. We're never going to leave here. As we grow, is if there's necessity to open up another location, I, I'm sure. And the beautiful thing about Annapolis is it has the infrastructure. It has everything one needs. If we needed more space, we could easily find it. Right or right here. True. For you personally, what's it feel like helming a almost hundred year old company? Yeah. I mean, I know you talked about you know a, as as a caretaker, but I mean yeah. it's a pretty daunting task. It is. It is. You know, it's don't it, screw it up, man. <laughs> well, and I and I tell you, and I've 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 used that exact term. This is the the fourth business that I've owned. Um, I haven't screwed on, up one yet. Knock on wood. But it that is it's actually the phrase I use with with sellers oftentimes. It's Hey, listen, my, my job in here is to continue this thing going. And I want to grow it, of course. And I'm not doing this just for the for the fun of it, but I want it to grow. I want it to succeed. But first and foremost, it is, you know, do no harm. <laughs> right? Make sure it keeps going. So it it's a responsibility for sure. How did how did um the employees take? I mean, you know, Peter had had it for what, 20? Yeah, he, 20 years. I mean, how do I mean you know, sometimes it can be a little bit dicey. Right. When you change ownerships, it's like, oh, God, it's that new guy from Jersey here. Yeah. You know, I, I've heard about those Jersey guys. Yeah, right, right. I um, mean, how, how was the transition when you came it, in? It went it went smoothly. What, what I've learned over the course of, of buying and operating small businesses, which I probably didn't appreciate as much, you know, in my previous life before I started doing this, is, you know, change is very, can be very tough on people. Right. And some people handle it better than others. But that is a big change for the employees. You know, they go from, hey, this is the guy that owns it. And he, I know and he, I know what he's like. I know what he sure. likes and dislikes. I know that he takes off on Thursdays at two, whatever. They're familiar with it. They're comfortable. And when a new owner shows up, it's very disruptive. With that said, it went very well with Weems. And I've never, never really had big issues. Um, it takes time for the the employees to get used to the new owner, right? Because I'm different, right? The fact is, you know, no matter what I do, no matter how good, bad, or indifferent I am, I'm going to be different than the previous guy, and I can't help that. And my method when I go in to buy a business, and I repeat it over and over again, tell everyone, I didn't buy this to go change everything. If I ne thought everything needed to be changed day one, I wouldn't have bought it in the first place. So I bought it because I like what you do. I think there's an opportunity to grow it and maybe make marginal improvements in the way they're in operation. So by and large, I'm not here to change anything. And it takes people, uh, it takes employees a little while, I think, to believe that, right? Because this is a big change. It's a sure. big shock. But, you know, give it two months, give it six months, give it a year. You know, here we are five years later, and it's it's pretty much the you, case. You talk the talk and walk the walk, and it's uh, and and also again, with a heart back on this nearly hundred year old company. I mean, uh, you're just the new guy that's here for a while. That's it. Uh, you know, <laughs> in the grand scheme of things, it's true. And I, it's it's funny. I I look at the businesses that that I've bought. In all cases, it's been a seller who has had it of an old business and that seller has had that business for 20 plus years. But the fact is when folks own a business and they get to a certain age, you know, they, they really need to say, Hey, wait a minute. What happens if tomorrow I get hit by the milk truck? Right. I don't want to leave this, you know, and running a business is, oh, it, yeah. it's a thing, right? As you know, it's tough. And not everybody knows how to do it. Not everybody wants to do it. So the owner of the business says, do I really want to leave this to my kids, to my family who maybe don't either want to run it or don't know how to run it? So you get to a certain age and they say, I got to sell it. 
all of that to say, I am going to get to that age too. You know, I think I, I, I have a number in mind, but you know, I, I have many years. I look at the age of the of the people that I bought the businesses from in the past, right? And they're it, it's it's uncanny. They're all within two or three years of of one another's age. Well, that makes sense. I mean, and, and typically, I mean, if you're buying businesses, you're it sounds to me like you're buying successful entities as opposed to a fire sale and somebody that's, you know, okay, I'm going to get it and split it up and, and all of that. Right. So, I mean, that it's, it's a whole different type of a thing. I mean, you know, they've lived a good life. They've earned a good income. They're, they're well established. They're, it's, that's right. it's, it's time to breathe because running the businesses, you know, and gosh, you know, for running several like you, I mean, it's tough and people don't realize that. I mean, there was a, a business in town again, we'll, I'll use your not name and names. She was a wonderful crafts person, mm-hmm. horrible business person. And the business suffered. And it was, you know, I was like, get a partner yeah. or sell it, you know, be the supplier or whatever it may be. But I said, it just, you know, it, it's so difficult. And there's so many balls that you have to have in the air to juggle to run a business that most people don't realize. And it's not for the faint of heart. Uh, I mean, there are some perks. But there are definitely a lot of perks for it, too. But it's. Uh, yeah. And it's it's I, it, and the the solution to it is one needs to have great people. And we have great people here at Weems, Right. Uh all the employees, uh, I think there's one person who is newer, but the rest of the employees have been here for 10, 15, 20 years, right? So when you've got great people, it becomes really easy. That speaks really well for the company. Yeah, I think so. You know, and we we look at this business and I the people who are here, they're here because they care, right? Because less, everybody here sales. I mean, how many people or actually live aboards here. I mean, people are in, in involved, right? This is their life. And they're working here because it, it, it's all about culture. At all these small businesses, it's always about culture, right? If somebody wanted to go rich, get rich, I don't know, they go whatever, go right. work some work on Wall Street, work right, TikTok, on TikTok, be an influencer. Right, <laughs> go, go start up a, a tech startup. But you, you look at, at these smaller businesses, especially when they're we're doing higher end stuff, the quality stuff, you know, people, I think, gravitate towards that, right? I want to do something quality. I want to do something I care about. And that's the kind of people we we end up with. Well, there's a sense of pride in the product. I mean, yes. uh, you know, you finally put that piece of tape on that box that's getting ready to ship out. And there's a sense of satisfaction, I've got to imagine, as opposed to the person that's just sitting on the assembly line. It's like, oh, absolutely. That's right. <laughs> you know, off, off it goes. I put my little pen in the box and... Uh, you know, it's, you know, I did this, I made right. this, I, right. you know, I stand behind it. My company stands behind it and everything else. It's wonderful. Yeah. Your tent sale is during the boat shows. And I know the boat shows, we got the power boat show that's coming in October 5th through the 8th. And the sailboat show is follows on the 12th to the 16th. Is your tent sale both shows? Uh, we are both shows um, and same hours, basically. So what we've done and, and what has been done for years historically uh, as long as this business has been on on uh, Eastern Ave, we've been here for 23 years now. Uh, we would actually say, hey, folks, if you want to come park over in Eastport, it's way easier to park here than it is mm-hmm. uh, back on the other side. So come park here in Eastport. We actually run a shuttle from our shop over to the boat show and round trips. Uh, but come to the tent sale and you can get some great bargains. We we have uh, – and, and the hours of the, of the tent sale – they match the days and hours of the, the boat, boat show. show. Both of them, yep. Well, you guys are located at 214 Eastern Avenue, which is just around the corner from the Annapolis Maritime Museum and Park and just around a little bit longer of a corner from Leeward Market, just to give people a- I, uh, I love Leeward. Uh, an idea of where it is. And I do recommend everybody go check out weems-plath.com. And for those that don't know what a hyphen is, that's a dash. <laughs> and uh, also Conant Collections, and that's C O N A N T Collections with an S on the end dot com, because there's really some beautiful artwork that's yeah. available there that's yeah. functional if that, you are uh, out on right. a boat or need to navigate or you know know about the weather or the the time of day. Yeah, and people love these on the end of the dock, especially the the anemometer that we have, the rain gauge. Put it at the end of your dock. Put it in your backyard. Yes. Well, Michael Flanagan, thank you very much, A, for your time. Thank you for your stewardship of Weems and Plath for the uh, last five years and for the next 
20, eh, 15, 20, whatever, whatever. It Somewhere may be. around there. That's uh, right. And I would love to come back and talk to you in five when you guys are celebrating your 100th. We'd, I'd love that. I love that. Please do. And thank you for having me on. Thanks for listening to this week's Local Business Spotlight. Please make sure to visit ionanapolis.net for all your local news, events, and opinion. And in case you haven't already, please subscribe to the Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief, where we bring you all the day's local news direct to your phone, tablet, or computer in about 10 minutes. It comes to you at 6 a.m. every Monday through Friday, and you can subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts.